Hello, faithful Screen Refresh listeners. This is co-host Dean, just here to tell you that host Tim and myself recorded our microphones a little bit too hot. So if you hear some distortion, don't worry about adjusting your volume settings. It's just that he and I are dummies and didn't do our due diligence with our microphone checks. Don't hold it against us. We're humans and make mistakes just like you. Now back to your regularly scheduled screen refresh programming. In a world where nostalgia rages across the land, where everyone and their mother has a podcast, where there's still a movie trailer guy who says, in a world, three friends revisit films, shows, and games that molded them as they search for answers to life, the universe, and everything in between. Settle in and join us for... Screen Refresh. So welcome to episode four or episode three, depending on if we ever release that very first episode we did with the introductions. Uh, for We're Predator, definitely releasing that. Uh, at some point for, pa- for Patreon. <laughs> also, we have a Patreon. No, uh, so welcome to episode four. Today we are uh, episode four of what? Episode four of Screen Refresh. We're a podcast <laughs> where we... Uh, they, they've already heard the intro. Yeah, the, the... watch the, listen to the first episode. Um, so as you know, we go through all the movies we grew up on, some of the movies that we didn't necessarily grow up on, but just the ones that we haven't seen in a while. Uh, just to touch on kind of what it is that makes us love movies. Do they hold up? Are they still good? Were they ever good? Have we just changed people? So today is my pick, which is Predator, which is a little bit different as far as movies that I grew up with as a child um, to follow up our surf ninjas and little monsters. I was unsupervised as a child with a copy of Predator that was taped off of an HBO preview weekend that I wore out completely. Love those uh, weekends. So it's as a child. It's that was like poor, poor families. Um, yeah, as a poor family, it's like, oh, are you yeah, saying my family pre- was poor? <laughs> <laughs> we you wouldn't were, be wrong. <laughs> we were uh, uh, middle class, but not you know the you know the lower the lower portion of the middle class. HBO was yeah. a luxury. <laughs> I mean, it's, whenever you were either like home from school as a kid, or it was a weekend and you had nothing to do, you would sit there and just flip through the channels, hoping that it would. Rather than static, you would all of a sudden just like have HBO or Showtime for the weekend uh, and then just furiously try to record or watch anything you can. I Um, used to have that thought with Channel 99 and furiously did other things. But (laughs) was that one that happened to be like (laughs) censored during a certain part of the day? Yeah. And then the sound came on at like 10 p.m. Oh, yeah. I don't know why that happened. My favorite. (laughs) I think they know what we're talking about. It's <clears throat> Dean was watching scrambled porn. So the <laughs> so the HBO free weekends that I mean, that's how I saw got Predator the first time. That's how I saw Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one and two. Um, it was pretty much anything that my parents thought looked interesting. They would just let the VHS go. And then I would end up with copies of it to eventually sit down and well, in Predator's case, wear out. Um, Jokes on HBO. You had that free preview turned into forever. (laughs) Yep. And I never paid for HBO since. (laughs) Actually, we uh, we had it for Game of Thrones, but we don't talk about that show anymore. (laughs) (laughs) What? So what show? So Predator released June 12th, 1987, up against the powerhouse that was Witches of Eastwick. Um, For anybody out there, that is a jack nicholson fan or who else was it was it um, i want to say michelle pfeiffer share and somebody else i don't remember i didn't, I didn't note that movie i saw it there and i was like i've heard of that i don't know if it's like lauded as a a great a good movie or not i don't know i've never seen i it. mean i've Which, always heard like i've never personally sat down and watched it i just always remember hearing about witches of eastwick um oh that's that's the mouse movie right Right. No, that's um, that's the witches with Angelica Houston, um, where they turn the kids into mice. That was based on the Roald Dahl book. This one was about three women in some town that end up finding witchcraft or something. And then they summon the devil played by Jack Nicholson and all three of them fall in love with him or whatever the case was. They find Um, they find witchcraft in a hole. Look, I found witchcraft. (laughs) 
<laughs> so uh, I know, I guess, Witches of Eastwick, it was listed as also June 12th, but I guess it was the number one movie of the following week. So I don't know if Predator just eclipsed it. And then after a week, everybody was like, yeah, we're over Predator. Give us Witches of Eastwick. For shame. And then, yeah. People love 1987. It's like they didn't know that that HBO free preview, preview weekend was coming up. <laughs> so, I mean, 1987, June, the this released against a number of things that are now considered classics and some that are Death Wish for the crackdown. So this <laughs> opened against uh, we had just gotten through the Untouchables, um, Roxanne with Steve Martin with Nail and I, Dragnet, Full Metal Jacket. Inner space, space balls, all in June. I can't picture like looking back at a lot of these ones that we're covering from looking into like the 80s or early 90s. It's amazing to think of just how many movies I now consider more modernized classics that all came out within a given month or even within a given year compared to now that I look at it and it's maybe within a year i'll find one maybe two movies that i would consider a classic that i would add to a collection More for the me. most part that's i've been thinking about that we've even discussed it a couple of times like what's our modern day classics yeah and there's i really can't think of many yeah whereas like if i have to say like the 80s you can throw a couple off the top of your head at least but now it's yeah, if I sat down, I thought about it, I'd probably come up with a couple movies that I'd say, yeah, in 10 years time, I would still be watching this movie. Mm. I know love or hate the Marvel movies. I would consider like the first Avengers or some of those a classic that 20 years from now, some kids are going to be throwing on the Avengers being like, oh, you ever check out this old movie. Um, also in June, actually, 1987, there was Harry and the Hendersons, mm, which yeah, I must that have been too. A, just a dynamite month for uh, Kevin Peter Hall, seeing as he will be playing the Predator uh, later on in this movie. Oh, he was Harry? He was Harry. Oh, shit. That, so, that's a movie that could be on this podcast at some point. I've actually never seen it. Oh, it's great. It, so it, it, it holds would, up for sure. So it wouldn't be a refresh. It would just be <laughs> just a screen. New um, new screen. So as far you're, as as for, well, the modern classics you're including Ernest goes to camp in that. I assume I still watch that. Oh no, uh, Ernest scared stupid. Uh, Ernest goes to camp came out in May at the end of May, right before Predator Two. Oh, I didn't realize that it actually came I, out around there. Yeah, I think Predator oh, was Predator set to come out. Predator. I'm sorry, just Predator. Predator. Oh, not Predator Not two. the Predator and not Predators. <laughs> predator. 1987, Get to the Chopper, Predator. Oh, okay. It was set to come out on May 22nd and they saw Ernest goes to camp with and we're like, uh, we can't, we can't do that. <laughs> we, we don't want to, we have a matching demographic. We don't want to split the crowd. <laughs> it's, it's in the woods. It's survival, I'd assume. Yeah, they were just and like, then the other's too similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but did Predator have a song montage at the end of it with him singing uh oh, something about a warrior in the rain uh no but it has a 90s uh sitcom television intro to boast no no it. but yeah ernest goes to camp he sings a song in the movie oh it was uh I, re I forgot what it was but we my brother and i loved it as kids so we took our little uh tape cassette and we recorded it like uh and so we can play it on our little boom box when we're doing whatever kids do back in, I don't know, 93. 93, yeah. So I think we've established, I, I watched a lot of HBO Free Preview Weekend of Predator. <laughs> um, <laughs> how did you guys originally come across this movie? Or, I mean, did you see it when you were kids? Did you see it recently? I think it's something I hadn't seen in its entirety until I was a bit older, probably a teenager. Same here. But I think probably having caught glimpses of it on possibly a free preview weekend or caught it on cable. As I may have mentioned, I, I'm the youngest of four. My three older sisters would rent R rated movies all the time. So it's possible I saw some of it that way as well um, when they weren't ushering me out of the room for sex scenes. In Predator? Did, did I not see that scene in Predator? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that the scream from the bridge that Billy makes in uh, towards the end of the movie. Um, ah! 
So which we'll get to that. I have whole, whole thoughts on the whole Billy thing. Right. So as far as um, like the first Predator, I remember because we taped it off of HBO, um, it was uncut or as far as it wasn't like edited for TV as far as anything like that. The only issue is we missed the very beginning. So up until I saw it like again, I don't know when I bought the Blu-ray five years ago or something. Um, I never realized the movie opens seeing a spaceship going to Earth. I always had the movie start with a lot of static as I have to adjust the tracking. And then all of a sudden I have the chopper land and everybody getting out to the da 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 da. And I never knew that they had the opening part, which I think was better to not have that in the beginning because I appreciated mm. it more not knowing like going into this as a kid, not knowing this is an alien movie, just, oh, a bunch of commandos are here and they're going to do whatever. I mean, Predator doesn't even show up for what, like 40 minutes of the movie, 35 minutes. Actually, it's a while. All my notes are in uh I use timestamps and I think you don't see him until at least half an hour. No, eh, like around the 40, 45 minute mark. As in like yeah. his first person view of the world. I don't have anything directly. I think maybe that's with what him, you mean. Yeah. But just looking at the time. That's stamps, how we first see him. Like in 18 minutes is the attack on the village to like the 25, 26 minute mark. Yeah, because I think we don't even see the Predator vision until after the the attack, when they're like doing the cleanup on the attack. Right. Because I think up until that point, whenever we see it, it's a first person, but we don't see any indication that it's not anything other than just like a camera acting as eyes, not like, oh, we have special thermal vision or we have all this other stuff or the Predator noise and whatnot. Yeah, from what I... Uh, I was looking at, you know, the fun facts on IMDb, I believe, kind of like Jaws, like you only see him for 10 minutes in the movie as a whole. It's yeah. funny how that always works in a lot of movies, like in Jurassic Park, it's, it's the whole movie's based on dinosaurs. But when you break down all the scenes that actually have dinosaurs in them, it only comes out to like maybe five, six minutes. Yeah, something like that. Which thinking of it, you don't even think about that because... It's, oh yeah, they, the whole movie is just wall-to-wall -wall dinosaurs. It's suspense. It worked. I, I mean, it, it shows you how much, opposed to like Transformers, it's like, yeah, the human element and the characters and the writing is very important. Don't just lean on your gimmick. Well, I mean... Which, the, which makes those movies great. Jaws, yeah. especially. <laughs> not Transformers. <laughs> the, I mean, the, the problem, I know uh, the first, well, not the first Godzilla, the um the Godzilla that they did, I think it was was it Mike Doherty who did Trick or Treat did the the first remake of Godzilla or something or it might have been um, the Matthew Broderick one. No, the sorry, not that one. The when they did the reboot for Godzilla. Oh, the most recent. With, um, yeah. yeah, the most recent ones. Cran with Brian Cranston and Ken yeah. Watanabe and all them. Yeah, they limited the amount of screen time that they had for Godzilla. And the biggest complaint was I didn't go to Godzilla to watch a movie about all the people. I want to see Godzilla. So then the second one that they did for it, it was wall to wall Godzilla beating the shit out of everything that had two legs, four legs, six legs. And then the biggest complaint was it's too much Godzilla. It's just <laughs> nonstop spectacle. We get kind of a numb to it after a while. So, I mean... Make up your mind. <laughs> uh, a lot of, I mean, you just, people, a lot of people are dumb and they don't know what they want. Um, and they can't be trusted. Yeah, I mean, I think also that's it depends on the type of movie they're going for. Government. Oh, that's who it was. Gareth Edwards <laughs> did the uh, the first reboot of Godzilla and I think right, Mike right. did the second one. Yeah, I, I remember thinking the first Godzilla was like, not a bad movie. I definitely didn't like the second one as much as the first. I recently watched it. It was fun. I mean, I think it, it really is. It depends on what you're going for. If you're going for more of the suspense horror kind of then Predator worked perfectly. You limit the amount of screen time it gets and then it has a bigger impact because, I mean, at the end of the movie, which we'll get to with the, the reveal, it's an amazing reveal. Top 10 reveals of anything mm. um, as far as those. But if it's you're going for an action movie, well, I don't need the suspense of it the entire time as much. In that case, the Godzilla King of Monsters might work in that instance. 
Right. Of I came here just to see stuff get blown up and see people fight. And then you end up with all the Transformers. Um, so I think at this point, we've established how we've all been introduced to Predator as a series. Um, I mean, do you guys remember liking it the very first time you saw it? It was good. I mean, um, maybe not one of my top 10, but it was it was one of the better alien action flicks at the time um i didn't like the second one nearly as much as the first one and i feel like i don't know like he is one of the cooler like alien bounty hunter kind of things that you would be exposed to i love the camo and the shoulder cannon and shit yeah i think yeah, overall, i mean it's an amazing design to just come up with yeah i mean i'm sure we'll get into that later but and what the design was originally, but it is very not knowing the, the story behind it. It's like you're glad that it ended up being what it was instead of what it was originally conceived as. You yeah. kind of like, huh? When you see that uh, the original design of Predator. During this rewatch, I actually really try to pay attention to the scenes that I always usually just kind of gloss over because whenever I think Predator, I think of that. Like 45 minutes on, nothing before that where it actually has nothing to do with the Predator. And um, listening through over the mission, like I wasn't too big a fan of that whole um, like Dylan. And then they do the meme of the year um, <laughs> handshake and then having Dylan. like the mission broken down and like this is what you're doing. And I'm just this whole thing seems really kind of thin. It just you can tell like this really was meant to be a B movie because it just seemed kind of silly on how we have no reason for these group of elite commandos to go against this alien hunter. So let's just throw something together really quick. And it just, it felt really rushed. I mean, because the first half of the movie's tone is completely different than the second. And it just seems like it's a mandatory step to get to that second part. It wasn't a thin plot. His men were in that chopper when it got hit. So they cooked up the story and placed them all down in the jungle. <laughs> it's, but it's, yeah, it's, we need to do A so we can get to B. Yeah. It's obvious how much it, it's just like, he's like, I need the movie. Just get a bunch of really macho guys and we'll just go down in the jungle. Like, it's just like, that's all it is. <laughs> Which, I, I mean, I guess for the time, that's what people wanted. Like, you, you know, you say, like, we want more Godzilla. Like, they just, I mean, that 80s action was king at the time. Yeah. Which I wonder at the time, um, the marketing and everything behind it, granted, I wasn't really around to remember the marketing for that one, but how much they pushed it as just, here's all of these action people in this Commando movie, or did they push it as, here's going to be like a sci-fi alien movie? Mm. Because if they just pushed it as, here's commandos and there's something out there hunting them. I'd be very surprised watching them do this mission. And all of a sudden, just one of them gets murked by a plasma cannon. It's the beauty of not watching trailers sometimes, but I guess if there is a cut of that trailer, like out there on the internet, pro probably it might answer your question and what they were pushing at the time. Yeah. Trailers back then are like a whole different kind of monster. I, I thought about watching the original trailer, but I mean, a lot of the ones from back in the day, I, I they're kind of you can see the difference in terms of how far we've come when it tries to show off uh, what's inside of a movie. Yeah, it's very spoon spoon fed. Here's an action movie starring Arnold Schwarzenegger and then a bunch of shots of Arnold Schwarzenegger. I still can't yeah. spell his name. I've seen like <laughs> dozens of his movies. I, I don't know how to spell it. I think also back then they made more use of the like the Don LaFontaine trailer narrative for it. It's we now it's they show you with also some dialogue from the movie, but they always do like a down tempo version of a pop song played on a piano and a ukulele or mm. something like all these movies that are doing like taking songs and doing that for like a epic four minute trailer. Back then, it was just like a guy literally describing the the pitch of what the movie is while they just play like two clips. Yeah. Or in the case of some of them, it's you understand nothing. Like I went back and I rewatched um, if you've ever seen Legend with Tom Cruise and uh, Tim Curry. 
Nope. Um, I had watched the trailer for that and it was literally just like um, a Tangerine Dream score playing while it's just Tim Curry's line from like one part of the movie as it's just slowly like flashing legend up from the bottom of the screen and you have no idea what it's about. All I know is, well, it sounds vaguely surreal with some fantasy elements. But that I kind of miss that. That works a lot for me sometimes. Yeah. I mean, take like Cloverfield more recently, more recently now, like over a decade ago. But take like Cloverfield, for instance, where it was. I knew nothing from that trailer, but it got my interest. Absolutely. So. Yeah. It sounds you just played you a mini cut of the opening of the movie. Yeah. And like hits you, hits you with a big suspenseful moment and doesn't show you too much beyond that. Oh yeah. I'm watching yeah. the trailer now and they really do hype up that whole um, hostage rescue thing. And then they just kind of allude to the whole, like they're being hunted. I'll have it on <laughs> mute. So I just mute with subtitles. So I'm assuming like what the guy is probably saying, but a lot of it oh, is so just, it's just kind of like, Clips from They're the doing this mission, but something's out there, but not not too heavily. Yeah, this actually the trailer is a lot more modern looking than I expected. Is that the original official trailer? I know a lot of times I try to find the trailer and people will do their own recut and put it back up or it'll be like after the movie already came out, they'll do a re-release of the trailer for commercials. It's like when they did uh, what was it, Age of Ultron and like two weeks after the movie came out or a week after the movie came out. They did a second recut trailer where it had five of the best scenes of the movie in the trailer now all of a sudden, because that's what everybody was talking about. It's like, oh, Hulkbuster's in this. And it's like, well, yeah, that's oh, that pissed me off so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a side note. That was a in college in editing class. That was one of our uh, assignments. We took movies and ruined them and just cut our own trailers out of them. Oh. Ruined <laughs> that's them. its yeah. own art, though, isn't it? Nowadays. What? Yeah. 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 I did the Warriors because the original was kind of like, this doesn't get to the movie at all. Not that I spoiled the movie, but it's just like, you want to hype it a little bit. It's just them but, walking um, around Coney Island with credits. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I'll show you. I'll show you my Warriors trailer later and I'll, we'll link it at screenrefish.org. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's at hotmail.com. <laughs> Angel Fire. It's Geo actually cities. just a mailing list. We don't have a website. <laughs> Snail mail. I'll send you a hurry. A flip hurry book. before the the post postal service is gone. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know how they they marketed it. If you're watching the original trailer, but it is just. I mean, it's just a form. It's just a cookie cutter, just mission, and just to get them into the jungle. Mm. Yeah. But as so as far as leading into this, the so Predator was written by Jim and John Thomas, who did not a whole lot from the looks of it. <laughs> yeah, um, I saw. Yeah, like originally it was even... like, oh, they have like 47 credits to each of their names. And I was like, oh, wow. And then it's like, oh, Predator, Predator 2, Predators, the Predator, Predator <laughs> the... Concrete Jungle, the video game. And then I realized <laughs> they only did the first and everyone after that was characters by Right. So it's like, oh, they didn't do any of the others. It's just they had to keep crediting them for every yeah, iteration forever. of Predator. But um, yeah, so Jim, his only other things that I really recognized was Wild Wild West. The not the original, the one with uh, Will Smith and Kevin Klein. Um, and the if, if you remember the Tales from the Crypt episode Yellow. Um, no. I think it wasn't originally <laughs> billed as Tales from the Crypt. It was Two Fisted Tales. I remember it being a good one, but check it out. Anybody that's out there. Um, and then as far as the I don't know what their their relation is, Jim and John Thomas. I'm assuming they're related just because that's a little too convenient for both of them to be on the same thing. But um, he had done. If you ever seen Executive Decision, Kurt Russell. Nope. On the plane. Oh, I didn't see that in this credits. Yeah. So he did Executive Decision, which is a. I remember it being a fun one. I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily go back and rewatch it for this, but uh, I remember it being a, a fun twist of they send like Kurt Russell is has to go on this plane because of it's like a terrorist hijacking. And they send Steven Seagal also, who's like the head of this commando <laughs> unit and supposed to right. get in there and take him out. And then literally within like a second of Steven Seagal trying to get on the plane, he dies 
And then it's like, oh, shit. So who's going to do this now? And then Kurt Russell has to step up and work with Halle Berry, who's the uh, one of the stewardesses to take things back. So it's like it's a, a fun twist of the the macho hero that you think is going to be there. And then he dies. Definitely haven't um, seen that since it came out on video years and yeah. years ago. I always remember stocking at a blockbuster in the uh, the middle section back in the day. And directed, though, by John McTiernan. Mm, he's got a couple good credits. Yeah. When we were talking about this originally and I was trying to pitch the movie that I wanted to kind of revisit, my first thought was 13th Warrior with Antonio Banderas, because growing up with that one, we also watched that one to death. And then I decided to go back and rewatch it, and it didn't hold up for me to the point where I didn't know if I was even going to be able to talk about this or make it fun for any length of time. <laughs> as much as I love Michael Crichton, some of his stuff, I really, like timeline, I really expected to rewatch. I'm like, oh yeah, this is going to be good. And no, it really wasn't. Yeah, like it's I remember 13th Warrior being super fun, which it's still vaguely fun, but it, it's a little draggy in parts. Um, so I was a little disappointed. So that's why we ended up with Predator. But the I mean, he also did like Nomads, Hunt for Red October, Die Hard, Die Hard with a Vengeance. I don't know why I didn't lead with those ones. Uh, Last Action <laughs> Hero. <laughs> yeah, you know. You know, Nomads, the 13th Four. Warrior. Oh, also he did uh, Die Hard, arguably <laughs> the best action movie of all time. Mm -hmm. uh, Last Action Hero. I mean, he did. That's that's Roller another Ball. movie that could fit in this for me, too. Last Basic action Hero. with John Travolta, who does a little dance at the end. Thomas Crown Affair. I never saw that. Yeah. But, uh, Medicine Man with Sean Connery. Yeah, he had a he had a decent career. Yeah. So, I mean, overall, like I did most of the the best action movies that I remember watching growing up, um, which I always kind of equated John McTiernan into action movies um, for years, which makes sense. seeing you know, as that's kind of his. That's what got him going. That, yeah, that's kind of what got him going, kept him going and wherever he is now. So, like I mentioned before, I, I didn't have the beginning of this movie because of the the way we taped it um, legally. So the the whole alien ship thing never popped up for me until years later when I actually purchased it um, and watched which it is that the way. opening in the it's the opening of the movie the very first thing we see oh yeah which it's I find it a little bit unnecessary at that point it it's is like super you, vague though I guess it's just like something from space is looks like it's heading towards Earth and that's all that's all you get. Oh, yeah. But I mean, then you end up spending the beginning of the movie when they're like, oh, we're going to go into the jungle. We're doing it because we have a mission. You're just waiting. Yeah, you, that that's not the plot because I saw a ship land on Earth. So, <laughs> I mean, it's Godzilla, the bomb going off, Godzilla rising from the water and then them spending 45 minutes of a salary man just having his day at work. <laughs> and you're just wondering, this isn't a drama. Something's going to pop up at some point. I would say it's interesting seeing, uh, you know, yeah, we see that and then it's right into the plot quote unquote with the guy's yeah. landing i was just gonna say it's interesting seeing them before the mission just in their garb and how they're, they're establishing their characters right away oh, yeah. just as you see them like jesse ventura with his mtv shirt <laughs> yeah which i th i just i don't know the guy but i just think he's not really the the mtv crowd that's true this, especially back when this was probably a in the newer days of MTV, back when it was still like the young punk rock rebellious MTV, check yeah, us out. He would have been the guy yelling at kids to get a haircut and yeah. like, get a Jesse job. Jesse the Body Ventura. <laughs> Jesse the Body <laughs> from Minnesota. Um, actually, have you ever heard the story about um, Jesse Ventura and Arnold on set with this? I was re. I, I mean, I read a lot of like little tidbits, so maybe. About is so, the, the, the bicep measuring thing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you could tell it, yeah. So so I guess on set, there was like a lot of machismo because the cast. How could there not um, be? Yeah. So um, they ended up, it was Jesse Ventura and Arnold Schwarzenegger would kind of uh, rag on each other a lot. So um, Arnold was aware that he had the the bigger bicep. So he ended up 
uh, making a bet like, oh, it's going to be I forgot what it was. It was like a case of champagne or whatever it is. Um, how about you and I will get measured. Whoever has the, the bigger arms ends up winning. The other one buys them, whatever it was. So he he went and he had told the costume team next time you measure Jesse, tell him that, oh, your arms are bigger than Arnold's. And then he'll bite on this bet. So he was like, oh, yeah, of course, like, I'll take that. So they ended up measuring it. Naturally, Arnold wins and Arnold got whatever it was, a case of champagne because he couldn't afford it without Jesse Ventura, evidently. So it's it, it's all these ongoing series of Arnold playing a lot of pranks or jokes on all these different people over the years from all these different stories that I hear of him on set for stuff. So it's it's fun. Taking um, the piss. Yep. So fun guy, Arnold. Um, I mean, also we had, what was it? Sonny Landon supposedly had to have a bodyguard on set. That way he doesn't beat up anybody else. Yeah. Not to protect him from people to protect other people from him. Yeah. So Sonny Landon star All interesting of characters. the background of the warriors had a bodyguard to protect him from uh, Jesse, the body Ventura and Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> It reminds me of that um, picture of Jason Momoa where you see his bodyguards <laughs> and it's like, is it really necessary? Because these guys are like half his size. Mini bosses. It's kind of like, yeah, they could take people, but do they want to? They just weaken them up for uh, Jason Momoa. <laughs> you set them up and I knock them down. <laughs> so beginning of the movie, we got a, an alien ship that lands, followed by a, another ship that lands, the helicopter, which has two politicians on it. Um, which I was interesting years later to be like, huh? So we have what two governors on that ship? If we had everybody that walked off of that helicopter, and you told me two of these men are politicians, I would not point to Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jesse Ventura. No. I'd be like, yeah, it was probably like uh, Shane Black and maybe probably, yeah, Bill the Duke nerdy or... white guy with glasses. Yeah, <laughs> like, my yeah, mind would have been on Carl Weathers. I can see him as being a politician. Oh, actually, I can see Carl yeah, Weathers. He is commanding without being like. A... Super action star. I think it was just probably what in Rocky at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, because this was what I think a year before Action Jackson. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nobody remembers Action Jackson. <laughs> Him and Vanity. It's gonna be our big breakout role other than Last Dragon. <laughs> um which actually he was he did Action Jackson and thing like two years later he did Hurricane Smith, where both of them were like supposed to be action vehicles for Carl Weathers, where the main character is just like that's his name. <laughs> so he just plays Action Jackson and he plays Hurricane Smith. Um, never saw that second one, though. You were in a boxing movie, so we're going to give you boxing names. Boxing <laughs> Despite nicknames. Not boxing in any of these other films. <laughs> the cover is you with a gun. Um, you said, oh, you said, so uh, Jesse Ventura gets out on the MTV shirt. His best friend of the movie, Bill Duke, mm -hmm. the great Bill Duke, he's, uh, he's got like a, a tailored three piece suit on. Which They're getting out just, in what? What's it supposed to be? Like Venezuela? I forget where they are. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> just in the jungle? Just, so that's <laughs> how just he rolls. Pop, it just pops up jungle. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a basketball player going to the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, well, plus it's just odd because it's like you guys are supposed to be like best buds. They Bill Duke does not get over him the rest of the movie. And they both get out looking like the odd couple. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot it's of like, I would, going on between these If they guys. did a prequel, I would watch this movie. The two of them just like in basic training together. One of them with a toothbrush keeping everything clean. The other one being Jesse Ventura. I think they just dressed ironically like opposite, but I it just with irony. And then they take they load up in Jeeps and drive about 50 yards away <laughs> to the tent. <laughs> Like make a, sure they're well them, rested for whatever this is. <laughs> <laughs> they load up. There's a, make a big deal about them getting out, loading up these Jeeps. And then when they pull up to the tent, you see the helicopters in the background. Like they just, <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't make that walk. Well, not in a three-piece suit in the jungle. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so I just thought the, that was funny. <laughs> so, I mean, this is the point where we get um, Dutch and Dylan meeting again with the I mean, the as Nick Carl said, Weathers the, and Schwarzenegger, the memeable handshake of them doing that, like, clap. Dylan, you son of a bitch. 
What's the matter? The CIA got you pushing too many pencils? That, even more than the Predator itself, is probably what stuck with me for the most number of years. Every time I would run into my brother, every time we would do anything, it would be like that scene. Uh, <laughs> would you would you grip hands and just try to outmuscle each other? Oh, yeah, which I, I'd always <laughs> lose because it's me. Uh, so, I mean, great job to the cast and John McTiernan and Stan Winston for the creature effects. But I'll remember <laughs> that handshake between the two of them until my dying day. I thought you were going to say Stan Winston had a hand in like the close ups on the bicep. Like they made an Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> arm just to, to make it that yeah. much. Arnold actually wasn't there that day. So that was uh, R.G. Armstrong having to step in. <laughs> that was only to protect Carl Weathers, because if it was done with the real Arnie arm, he would have lost. Carl Weathers would have lost his own arm. So <laughs> right. Much earlier in the film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the only way that they would have been able to save it for later. You son of a bitch. Yeah, it's very, very classic. Full of modern so, day memes at this point. Yes. They never so, I mean, they, it, they only knew back then. <laughs> so, I mean, at this point, it's as Nick said, it's a paper thin plot uh, to get them out there. It's the uh, foreign government or the terrorists have some people that they captured that were out there as a unit and now they're supposed to go in there and get them back out and it's an extraction mission um yeah you can imagine the scene that was probably cut with the carl weathers and the general uh and the general's like i need the best (laughs) (laughs) he's like well I, i know your man general didn't need that scene realistically they could have just had it skip everything and they're just already standing outside to do the raid on the other building and we wouldn't we wouldn't lose anything like characterization wise we no. wouldn't lose anything other than that jesse venger is a schmuck and um <laughs> bill duke likes to dry shave um what else is going he's on constantly shaving Shane, yeah, constantly shaving he's, he's, I mean, no he's hair baby growth. smooth no yeah. hair growth <laughs> But that's Probably why, because he's always razor. That's true. No blade in the razor. <laughs> just like a, a safety first thing with the... <laughs> Maybe he so, used to smoke and he just has a fixation and he just get a... <laughs> so we have all this build up for... Actually, I mean, the, the action scene for the raid on the place was fun. Uh, but before we get to that, they do the, the whole the chopper scene. Um, we have the whole thing with... Carl Weathers or Dilling having the altercation with Blaine over the chewing tobacco. That's a real bad habit. Him spitting on him. The whole Shane Black, Billy telling, uh, or rather, I think Shane Black's the only one I don't remember his name in this movie. Hawkins. 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 Yes, thank you. So Hawkins jokes to Billy, which is... As a child watching HBO, I was like, "I, I don't get it. You know, I'd like a little pussy. She said, me too. Mine's as big as a house. You see, she, she wanted a little one because hers was a... Big as a house. Yeah, right. That was apparently improvised by Shane, or he wrote it, at least. He came up with those. He tells like two crude jokes, and I think he came up with both of those. Well, it's his writing got better over the years. Until it didn't. I saw Predators. Also, the Hawkins with the the glasses and back when he was young, he reminded me of Egon the entire time watching this again. <laughs> yeah, he had yeah, a very a like Harold Ramis look to him. He's the only one with the, that's why he's the only one with a proton pack when they go into the raid on the camp. Yeah, he definitely s- seemed like the odd man out in the group. I don't know if it's an actual reference, but did you catch the little like Stranger Things Easter egg? I think I don't know if it's actually related no elaborate so they're going after a man named jim hopper yes and also hawkins i don't know if they're at all related but i wonder if they tapped into certain things to pull names from yeah i did make a note about that later on i never would have noticed that although i guess it makes sense because clearly the what is it the duffer brothers yeah um that do stranger things like they're clear fans of the 80s and products of the sure. 80s so That's a good- it would absolutely makes sense if it's like oh yeah we need to come up with some names one of my favorite movies growing up predator let's pull 
Like, yeah, it's like an obscure name, too. Yeah. yeah. Which also makes sense at the end of season three when Hopper is skinned alive and then hung <laughs> up in a tree. Yeah, I think I made a note later on, like, wow, ru- after saving Hawkins, Hopper had a really rough go. <laughs> really grisly end. They call him Hopper through most of the movie, but at one point they actually say Jim Hopper. And I'm like, well, wait, what? Right. Yeah. yeah. When he sees dog tags. Yeah. Get Hopper to the chopper. <laughs> Um, Jim Hopper, the other guy, C. Hopper, get to the chopper. <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing that happens when they land. They, I mean, their whole yeah. quote unquote mission was to find this other team, right? Or no, the team, they didn't know the other team was going to be there. That's it. All they, all they knew was where the helicopter went down. Yeah, and right. they're going to work from that. I have to say, on the helicopter ride, <laughs> this is like a covert mission. It's like, seems very important. But as they're flying to the mission, Carl Weathers reveals more information to Dutch. Who's our backup? No such thing, old buddy. This is a one-way ticket. Once we cross that border, we're on our own. Like, <laughs> it seems like very important. It's like, you would have brought this up before. But Dutch is just like, boy, oh boy. <laughs> this is getting better than a minute. Any more surprises? <laughs> like, he doesn't care well, as much. He's like, I, I like how, how can, can it get any worse? <laughs> Every step of the way, up until the point where, like, almost where the predator shows up, he's finally like, I, I don't think this is the mission that you promised me. <laughs> it's he doesn't know he's hoodwinked the entire time yeah. up until like after the raid is complete. Yeah, not like, oh, this isn't what I signed up for. It's well, we did the raid. Wait a minute, none of those guys. That doesn't make any sense. So yeah, so they they land the chopper. They find the other chopper. Um, Billy finds the other soldiers hanging out up there. So interesting thing. Literally. Not just not hanging out. (laughs) (laughs) So the Billy's climbing up there and then they do the whole thing with like Billy chopping the vine and drinking the water. He's wearing two canteens. (laughs) Why? (laughs) It's a delicacy, Tim. Like that. You you can't get that at home. (laughs) Uh, Tree vine sap water. (laughs) Every drink it looks milky. It's like it's milky. I think like he's just conserving it because at least he doesn't know yeah, when he's going to yeah, find out. Right. That's true. Yeah, use the. Don't use your reserves. So yeah, I mean it was when he was drinking the vines, and then I figured like, oh, it's weird that he doesn't have a canteen, and then he like turns and he has a canteen, and I was like, oh, so he has one, and then he climbs up after like the chopper or whatever, and then he has another one on his other hip, and I was like, he's carrying two canteens. <laughs> They just keep thinking he's thirsty. He would at least like drink the good water and then refill it up with the vine water. It's like an RPG where it's like you get good stuff and like I can't use this. Like I, I need it for later, <laughs> and you just never use it. He has no inventory space. The, so that's the scream at the end when Predator is coming. It's Billy <laughs> ripping his shirt off, pulling both canteens out, and furiously trying to drink it by the end. Yeah, there's that shot later so on they don't too, go where to he's waste. just he has a wheelbarrow full of water that he just won't touch. <laughs> Try. It's dragging it through the jungle. It's just Predator drowning him in uh, his two canteens. <laughs> so, interesting tidbit. So they're coming up on the base raid. Oh, actually, yeah. So leading up to the base raid, that's when we first see the shots of the th- uh, Predator thermal vision. The, like, the sound, the look, all of it's perfect. Cool. Yeah, it kind of comes out of nowhere, right? They're just, yeah. they're they like, yeah, let's move on. And it's like, it's kind of like whip. He's like a crack whip, I think, sound effect. And it's like all of a sudden we're looking through Predator's eyes. And you're like, what the hell is this? Yeah. And then like Arnold, you're like, this is not the mission they promised. <laughs> so the the thing that I found very interesting is this is supposed to be a covert mission, correct? Like they're supposed yeah. to sneak in, take out the guys, get their people back and leave. Not one silencer yeah. out of the group. One guy with a chain gun, another guy with a grenade launcher is his primary weapon. Yeah, like a helicopter mini- mounted minigun carrying like, around. Yeah, like so Arnold at no point thought that they might be lying to him when they're like, we need a covert mission for you to sneak in there. And every guy's armed to the gills with like heavy machine guns, rail guns, plasma casters, all these things. You think that's the minigun's actually, big? You should have seen what we left behind. That's my little tidbit for this whole movie. You know, that's the actual same minigun from Terminator 2. 
Oh, interesting. It is the same like actual prop. Oh, Arnie wow. loved it so much in Predator that when it came time to shoot for um, Terminator 2, he's like, I want to use this gun. We used it in Predator. And then they managed to find just the same one. Because I guess they're like at the time, there's just one prop department that like, oh, we need guns. They're the ones that's going to have it. And I guess there wasn't a huge demand for mini guns. So it was actually cool <laughs> that it's just, just the same gun from both movies. That is awesome. I did not know that. They slowed down the rate of fire on the gun, too, so it could actually be seen on camera. I guess it, in real life, it spins kind of like a propeller. You wouldn't even see the barrel spinning. They kind of slowed it down like two to three times just so you could see the the barrels rotating and make it more awesome. Yeah, it would have been a little disappointing for just Jesse Ventura standing there with essentially a, <laughs> a gun just stationary. <laughs> you kind of hear it. S static. It's doing something. It's definitely cutting down the entire jungle. So, I mean, we finally get to the base raid, um, which I always think the base raid, it, it, aside from the fact that once I started loving Predator as like initially when I first saw it, it was I want to get to the Predator. I want to see all of those scenes. So every time I would rewatch the movie, that's the part I was hoping for. So this was all the stuff that was just getting in the way leading up to it. But now rewatching it, it's appreciating all of the lead up to it and all the stuff going into that, which the base raid's fun. I feel like it, it's a step away from the rest of the movie because Arnold does all of his one liners during this entire raid scene. His stick around and oh, the yeah. knock, knock, <laughs> knock, knock. <laughs> yeah, stick around, knock, knock. Yeah. Stick around. Knock, knock. Also, I like how Arnold hip fires his assault rifle the entire movie. Yeah, and they used, they, it, the whole they, if it was supposed to be stealth, all they did was use explosions <laughs> because it was a grenade and then another grenade and another another explosion. And there was barely any firefight. I'm amazed that they even found the hostage because they had no idea what building she was in. And they blew up at least four buildings. Showtime, kid. Somebody even asks, they're like, oh, did you find the other yada, yada, yada? And he's like, no, they're dead. And it's like, well, no shit, they're dead. You just smoked the entire place with four, like, all of your stuff is heavy artillery. I will say, though, leading up to this, when they're scoping out the insurgent camp here, it reminds me of a joke in the, what's the uh, Val Kilmer, Top Secret? Yes. They're kind of walking, well, in the Top Secret, they're sneaking up on whatever, the Nazi camp. And they're walking through these leaves and Val Kilmer's like, shh. And they just keep walking, but just cut the sound completely. So now it's completely silent, <laughs> like they need to be quiet. It's kind of what happens here when they're sneaking up on the camp. They're crawling through the driest, crunchiest leaves. And it's just <laughs> complete and total stealth. Like you don't hear shit. <laughs> they could turn it off and turn it on like that. So they, they have the power for stealth. But yeah, they're just like, let's run this truck in the camp, blow it up and just start firing wildly into, into the camp yeah i feel like the the start to your covert stealth attack is throw a truck into the building <laughs> it's not really <laughs> like surprise the so it there was a cool shot there like it's still no, zero stealth but when they're all doing the attack and then they do like the the wide shot and billy runs in from the top and it's he's on top of like all the whatever they are, like the crates or whatever. And the guys are all down in the foreground and he's firing down. Not stealthy at all. Looks cool. And I guess that's that's all that matters here. Yeah. Um, plus the fact that Arnold at one point grabs Mac and he's like, clear the area. No traces. Get the men ready to move. And it's like, <laughs> you, you've seen you've seen what's going on, right? <laughs> If I leave no traces, he means obliterate everything that they can't even, like, find a body. It's possible it was written to be very uh, Tongue covered in, in stealth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> we went two different directions. There. <laughs> and they got there to filming and Arnold's like, we, no, we're not doing this. We're going to blow everything up. And the director, you know, you can't. He's. It's like there's a director, but when there's a star like Arnold at the time, it's like you do what Arnold wants. And it's probably what he wanted. Or, I mean, who knows? Maybe Arnold wanted it to be the self thing. And they said they I mean, I can see it being a case of this is perfect. Like it's 
purposely over the top and super like hyper masculine macho all that stuff just so this way when the predator shows up we can see how big a difference of them being outclassed is with the predator that's a good point uh, while you were talking i kind of made that connection too and yeah i think you're right it's these guys are the best of the best of what they do and they're Save for maybe one of them, no match for the Predator. Rewatching the shootout, I mean, if the best of the best is just walking out behind from behind cover and <laughs> opening fire. Maybe they weren't up against uh, guy, good guys to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> they were the okayest of the okay. <laughs> these, these guys look like the Call of Duty veterans of 20 years and then deciding to play the single player on like easy mode. <laughs> in case, well, in case you forgot how manly these dudes are blaine jesse ventura poncho points out that he's bleeding and blaine says i ain't got time to bleed <laughs> well i i always appreciated poncho he was my favorite out of the group super level-headed because he was the only one who was like very level-headed he wasn't super macho it was like he had enough of blaine shit years ago probably during this uh these guys <laughs> right i always imagine that he was the rookie like he was the, the mm. last one to join that crew. Yeah. He had like the big aspirations and got smacked in the face with reality. And once he realized what this life really meant. Well, also, I wonder what's Hawkins doing on this crowd? Yeah, he's <laughs> he, he came out. in out of somewhere like he the whole time I was waiting for them to be like, oh, Hawkins are like tech or radio guy or something. And it's like, no, they don't. To my knowledge, I don't mention that. He's just one of the commandos. And like, <laughs> is he? Wait, actually, there's a scene where the, he, um, what's his name? Dylan's on the radio, but I don't remember who actually was holding it. Because they had one of those like super <laughs> so big. Hawkins is the radio holder? Maybe. <laughs> he doesn't operate it. He holds it for he's Dylan. Comms. It's comms. Yeah. Ah. Because it's that massive backpack he's got to carry because it's like the satellite phone, whatever that's able to communicate. But the, but they've got no backup. They're on their own. Who are they going to call? Ghostbusters. <laughs> ah, that's where Hawkins comes in. And then that's when they do the Predator vision and you hear the first time, I think it's of the any time that Max says, but you hear it distorted and then repeated right. through the, the Predator he's, voice. He's, he's listening. Yeah. I mean that and we get the, the last of Hawkins jokes. The other day, I was going down to my girlfriend. I said to her, Jeez, you got a big pussy. Jeez, you got a big pussy. She said, why did you say that twice? And I said, I didn't. See, it's got because of the echo. With... Best thing Billy contributes to the group is just a, <laughs> it's, it's a warm, a hearty laugh, a hearty, warm laugh. It's an um, overreaction. Which is why they had him there. <laughs> I almost thought he was making fun of him at first, but I was like, no, he genuinely thought a Hawkins joke was funny. <laughs> yeah, what, female if it, anatomy. what if that's what it was? He was just making fun of Hawkins, <laughs> just purposely <laughs> over the top <laughs> laughing at it. Yeah, we get it, Billy. We get it. So Mac kills that scorpion that's on Dylan's back. But they make it very suspenseful. And I thought it'd be yeah. funny. If, what if he just stabbed it? What if that was it? He just like, yeah, he just ends him right there. <laughs> there wasn't a score. He's like, hey, turn around. <laughs> it just gets back to the predator vision. You and it's like visibly bitch. jostled. You just hear like a. <gasps> <laughs> maybe I shouldn't mess with these guys. It, it almost gives the impression. Maybe he's just. What if he just originally went there as like a nature documentarian? Like. A Nat Geo guy kind of goes to the African savanna. He could like be take... there, David Attenborough. Yeah, but like maybe somebody saw him, like Jim Hopper, and attacked <laughs> well, him. Like and a, he's like, "Well, I oh have boy, to." Here I go myself. killing again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Hawkins is comms, but they're kind of like Native Americans. They don't. They got. They don't. They got to use the. They they got to use the whole, the whole body to kill. They don't. They can't just leave it sit. They got to utilize everything he didn't, that they're given. He didn't use uh, utilize anything. <laughs> the body was still skinned, hanging upside down. The yeah, most he takes inter- is what? The skull and spine? But they, they interrupted him. He was obviously still there doing his work. And he had to skedaddle because they found out his little 
hiding spot. I mean, I think we've established in the lore that I, I don't think they go back and eat them. <laughs> it just kind of, eh. It's, I guess, just a taxidermy situation. <laughs> With the... uh, you did confirm Hawkins as comms, though? Yeah. Okay, so at least that makes sense. They give the guy with glasses the comms. They really kept with their action movie uh, themes there. Another fun tidbit I read that McTiernan forced those glasses on Black, and he's like, he did not want to wear them. He wanted to wear like cool ballistics glasses that like, the commando like, would wear. And I was like, no, you got to look like a nerd. Like Top Gun aviators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah, exactly. So he's, he's walking forced, around the jungle, can't see. He was forced into the Coke bottle glasses. Yeah. Well, I like how also they're having him. They really go the extra mile because they force him into the glasses there. He's the only one like reading comic books on the helicopter ride. He's reading was it, I think, uh, Sergeant Rock, which I, I don't know if that's just like a Shane Black little add on or if that's something they had him do for his character. But yeah, so clearly it's they're setting him up to be the the nerdy one compared to everybody else there. The nerdy one that still murders. Yep. Um, <laughs> or if it's not murdering in war, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it's, your, mor- your moral isn't it standing on that. I think it's, it's, it's still murder. <laughs> it's still murder. I mean, it's not only murder. Murder also, that you can't go to jail for. <laughs> exactly. Also, I mean, he also says one liners while murdering people. Yeah. <laughs> if there was any good intent there, it's kind of ruined by hitting a guy with a knife and being like, stick around. Got this one from Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> so... So, I mean, the the base raid, we get the Predator, we have the whole um, scene of they find Anna, one of the uh, captives there that they take along. So it's not that they're freeing her. They just take a captive and she's just a different captive now. Um, well, guess what? Meanwhile, they, it's a woman. They probably like we're not going to kill the woman. And Dylan's like, she might know some shit. So she's coming with. Yeah, because I think it was a case of she wasn't with that group. I think she might have been from. I don't know. What, There's like, a local. Wouldn't have been from a town. Like, clearly there's no <laughs> village from they're walking through all of this. And you would think if there was a village nearby, she would be like, oh, yeah, if we're walking through here, like we're starting to get killed. There's a village here. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, but she's with so, yeah. them now. She goes with them. Yeah. Meanwhile, Arnold's biceps continue to grow throughout the entire film. <laughs> Right, just off screen, there's a, a a PA holding a barbell. Barbells. <laughs> After each take, he just does some pumps. Yeah. So this is actually cool. So after we do all this, all that fun stuff, it's the scene where Sonny's looking into the woods. And then they do the like the point of view from Sonny and you're looking out there. They do this a couple times throughout the movie where it's them looking out into just like jungle brush. And I had to really look this time. To see, can you still see the translucent predator or are these scenes where he's not even anywhere in the shot? And a couple times, I think he's just not there at all. And then a couple times where he's there, but it's just the translucent one. I, I mean, I, I feel like it was pretty apparent when they wanted to show him. I know what you mean. Like, I, I looked around the frame, too. Like, are they are they making it super subtle? But I think it's just empty jungle stuff until it's yeah. apparent that his stealth camouflage it's is empty till it's not being utilized but yeah billy's like spooked like he's almost catatonic what's got billy so spooked can't say major been acting squarely all morning billy what the hell is wrong with you there's something in those trees he's like there's something out there other than his laugh <laughs> Hawkins, tell me another joke. So he was spooked by the joke. <laughs> so we have uh, Anna joining their party now. The thing that made me laugh a couple times is how many times in this movie Anna makes an escape and breaks for it by just like huddling over, and then somebody walks near her and she throws a pile of leaves in their face, and they're like, "Oh!" And then she just takes off running. She got Dylan. They catch her. And then she ambushes Hawkins with the exact same thing and starts to run away again. These guys just took out a raid party. And two of them get taken out by a handful of leaves. And this woman just bolts off into the jungle. Doesn't matter how good you are. Pocket. Nobody's ready for pocket sand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, they're really inept at, at having a hostage. To be fair, nobody wanted to bring her except for Dylan and. 
So maybe they're just not trained to deal with South American <laughs> hostage women. They don't have the emotional stability to <laughs> care for another human being. <laughs> We're used to killing everybody we come into contact with. <laughs> we don't take hostages. This is when Hawkins gets got. Yeah. The second time she breaks away. The predator is watching this, watches Hawkins chase after the, the woman and decides to zero in on Hawkins. Which I would have loved the second time she does the leaf trick to have Predator's point of view and then just have him do the Billy laugh. <laughs> <laughs> just like, just because at this point he's watching all this stuff go on. I think this is what humans call humor. <laughs> So, yeah. I mean, this is when Hawkins gets killed. And then I like how when they, uh, I think it's what, Poncho, that ends up finding Hawkins and Arnold asks. Did you find Hawkins? I, I can't tell. And Arnold's face is like terror and confusion. And I'm like, everybody always talks about how Arnold is such a terrible actor. But even as early as this. There are a lot of scenes where Arnold's doing a good job. Yeah, he can convey, like, I think it's just his accent that throws people off most of the time. He can convey emotion without words pretty well, like you're describing, I'd say. He's like, is this is this Hawkins? And then how they split up and, like, check the perimeter. And they look yes. for his body. Sorry, that's it. They're like, find his body. So that's, that's <laughs> when they split up. <laughs> and Jesse Ventura is like, right here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so this is the whole the poncho thing did they did you find hawkins i can't tell they're looking around um and that's they do when, show a pile of guts right it's just like a pile of guts but like i th i don't know if this is hawkins, yeah and i it's think like, i think so you don't see it because they're like where's his body well r when hawkins gets taken we see that's when we see predator i think for real the first time like his uh um, you see the camo, you see the uh, the invisible camo, and it's like there's a ghost essentially, and he drags Hawkins' body off into the into the jungle after killing him. They 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 find the speechless woman who was right there when Hawkins got killed. Oh yeah, because that's when she says the was it the jungle came alive and took him or something to that effect. That's not what she said. No estoy segura, no sé. She says the jungle. It just came alive and took him. Bullshit! It's not what she said. What she said doesn't make any sense. I want Hawkins' body found. Sweet pattern. Double back. 50 meters. Let's go. That's when Blaine, they do the camera whip. We get the, the first plasma caster. Blaine goes down. That's the first time that Jesse the Body Ventura becomes Jesse a Body Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> Predator just decides, like, I'm going to start killing these guys. Yeah. Well, it's probably he saw the MTV shirt. <laughs> Get a haircut. <laughs> and then that's when Mac runs in, picks up the chain gun, and then just starts firing into the, uh, the jungle. <laughs> Which I like how... All of them just immediately, it's always oh, firing in a direction. All of us fire in that direction. <laughs> yeah. Like, I understand the concept is if somebody is here before they can get too far away, riddle it with bullets and we're bound to hit him. But there is no conservation of ammo here. If they're out here, they're fucked. Doesn't matter who they are. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't be out like, here. I would love to see them do all of their landscaping this way. They just walk <laughs> out and just firing line. I had a thought like that Blaine's minigun just cuts down the forest. Like, why didn't they just do that in the first place? Just whatever they're searching for, just cut down the forest and it'll make things a lot easier. Well, I think they, they just spin them in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> so... Anyway, they so they do the they do the firing line. Mac um, says that he hit something. They investigate Blaine. They rule the death as a suicide. 
And then we get the scene with uh, like the we see the predator blood for the first time. That was always a cool look to me. The kind of glowing green goo glow sticks. Mm. Yeah, apparently That's it what was they used. Yeah. Glow like I always goo. wanted to make a drink that looked like predator blood. So anybody out there, tipsy bartender, make that. <laughs> it was glow stick gl- goop and uh probably ky jelly yes exactly actual Vaseline blood. kind of thing yeah yeah it was a cool effect it's cool how not only do they give us like the predator blood and whatnot i like how in the first movie we get a glimpse into the predator like surgery process of him doing like field medic work on himself but we don't get a lot of specifics we don't get an explanation you just kind of see bits of it and it's okay, I understand what he's doing here. It adds kind of a cool mystique to Predator without, like nowadays they make a Predator movie, they're going to be like, oh, clearly he's doing that. (laughs) Using David Attenborough, like narrating as he's, and now the Predator decides to take his tweezers and shove it into the wound. Yeah, like, you know, there would be a scene with the scientist explaining how and what he's doing and, oh, they learned that from whatever, yada, yada. So it's it's cool how limited our information is in this movie. I agree that it is it is a good scene and it just because of so many field medic scenes we know what's going on. But I think for a super advanced seeming alien species you'd have something it seems like field medic technology has not advanced so far in their, as far in their culture. He's still like like there's still like several processes he goes through to heal his wound <laughs> or they don't just, get injured often. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. They're, they're the best to, at what they do. They don't meet their match often. Although later on, we'll find out that Xenomorphs are oh, uh, them up very badly. Um, yeah. I, sorry for the tangent. I recently, after rewatching predator, I was like, Oh, you know what? On hippo max or HBO max, they have, um, aliens versus predator AVP. I haven't seen it since it came out. Let's see if it holds up. The and then first, watching it again, the first one, I remember one? the first one oh, and okay. watching it again. I remember it didn't hold up the first time I saw it. So no. it definitely doesn't hold up now. No, those movies were trash. Second yeah. one was better only because they actually leaned into the rated R thing, but that really didn't help it much. Yeah. yeah. So don't expect a screen refresh on AVP. I have zero memories from watching that movie. The first movie. I I vaguely remember the second. I just remember it was so dark the entire movie. It was always difficult to tell what was going on. Yeah, not even dark like, ooh, it's these is this is some like really adult content. Like, no, it's just the screen is so damn black you can't see what's going on. Yeah. It's like, oh, it happened in nighttime and no street lights were on. Well, that's great, but gotta gotta give me a movie. So we get the predator blood. We get the surgery scene. We, get a, actually, we do get a good line there. Arnold line. It's subtle. I thought it was whenever I saw it written down, I thought it was more dramatic. But he's like, when the big man was killed, you must have wounded it. Its blood was on the leaves. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Which is probably what Predator is saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> if they bleed, I can kill them. <laughs> I've seen a lot of thin bleeding. <laughs> So I actually feel bad for Mac here because the the rest of the time you clearly see that Mac and Blaine were friends, which I always it would have been cool to see more stuff between them because Blaine the entire time just seems like such an asshole. Yeah. And Mac doesn't seem bad. He seems gruff, but he seems like a pretty good guy. So you think maybe Blaine wasn't all terrible if Mac is such a good friend to him. And he does the whole thing of leaving the flask and on the body and his whole talk that he does later on. Yeah, I have a note here. Pour one out for Blaine. You know, actually, my note for it was I actually don't remember him being so distraught over Blaine or uh, yeah, over Blaine. And then um, what uh, what did I write? Because I actually had to go back. I'm like, okay, this this makes. Yeah, I don't remember Mac losing it so much over Blaine's death. Sad what happens to him. And then seven, eight minutes later, like, okay, his breakdown makes more sense now. And this is at that point where he's just going ape shit over, like trying to get the predator killed. Yeah, because I mean, that's when he does the whole like talking to the moon while he's dry shaving and he's 
Um, yeah, which at that that's the point when he ends up making the vow to Blaine's ghost that he's going to inscribe his name on the Predator, which I think really missed out on a, an opportunity for a force ghost, Jesse the Body Ventura. <laughs> just a scene Smile of him just in, in like a some- cloak. He spits tobacco like him and gives a, <laughs> gives a smile. On the subject of Bill Duke, I just wanted to say I think there was somebody on set whose sole job was to spray him with a fine mist throughout the entire <laughs> movie. Although, realistically, if they filmed in the jungle, it's got to be hot there. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely humid. But also, yeah, he's... But he's just... It's like a perfectly... It's like manicured droplets of water all over his I mean he's bald so it's just it's all over super apparent everywhere and it just it's like perfect and it looks super uncomfortable (laughs) (laughs) I mean watching the movie I feel warm it's a tough thing to watch in summertime it's a and it's an experience turn your AC off watch Predator in summer so the the whole thing with Mac he ends up making his vow to the ghosts of Blaine um all of the crew pretty quickly just come to the conclusion that it's like it's a non-human alien creature billy you know something what is it i'm scared poncho bullshit you ain't afraid of no man there's something out there waiting for us and it ain't no man they don't say alien but they're pretty quick to just be like two of us are dead it's got to be non-human. <laughs> no human creature can be out there in those jungle. We're all going to die. It's not possible. We are the best. <laughs> we are the best except for Hawkins. Sorry, Hawkins. <laughs> it's like Lord of the Rings. Like, no man can kill me. Yeah, Blaine Predators comes in and just takes Blaine. Blaine's body. It's gone. Came in through the tripwires. Took it right out from under our noses. Which is kind of a dick move. <laughs> you see how much he prizes his trophies. He's like, I That's can't true. I can't waste a single kill. I mean, like Mac does his whole thing. He's like crying over the corpse and he has the flask there and he's shouting to the heavens. And the Predator just yoink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you guys don't need that, I'm gonna take you out. <laughs> What Mac should have done realistically is taken the skull first. <laughs> and then it would have been nothing he could have come gotten. The rest of the movie would have just been him dry shaving with a skull. The um, So this is the point when they have the they start setting up traps. Or I think it was right. after this, right? Yeah, yeah. They they Yeah. After if it's bleeds, they can kill it. They finally find out about the blood, or Arnold hears about the blood and it the we can fine. kill it so they're like, yeah that's when they realize oh <laughs> maybe the we have a chance there was blood <laughs> i cut open this grapevine and drank the milky substance and saw a fish <laughs> um yeah it's so, where they make a stand it's like yeah because mac like, ends up thinking there's something in camp that's when he ends up killing the hog they end up coming back and being right. like, oh, you couldn't have found anything bigger. And that's when Blaine's body goes missing. Right. Exactly. Which means that the predator weaponized wild boar <laughs> specifically to draw them out so he can steal Blaine's body. He's also he's he, slightly inspired by Beastmaster. <laughs> he truly is the best predator. <laughs> Take it right from under their noses. <laughs> so also, I like how after Blaine's body gets stolen, it's like the next day. Um, and now Anna speaks English, which means did she speak in? Well, she she had to have spoken English the entire time. She just chose not to. It's predator which, technology. She she had no idea. Is this another ruse of the predator? <laughs> what is it like, <laughs> Doctor Who? As long as she's within a certain amount distance between the predator, she or uh, she can just speak any language. Which I'm glad we get the scene of Dutch finally deciding to cut the ropes on her because too many times it's always like. There's something else going on at a movie, but they still refuse to let any of like the captives free. Hmm. He's it's like, like you're yeah, getting he, eaten alive out there. And that's it's, his. Yeah. yeah. But you might be dangerous. Yes. <laughs> Anna's the danger here. She got you twice with a pile of leaves. Wasn't she just one of the hostages from the camp or was she one of the actual? I don't think she was one of like the 
the she was just one of I don't the even know what they were. They gorillas they terrorists. Or, they're they rebels. Were like, they're yeah. like oh. yeah, there's some kind of infighting going on in the country wherever they are and they're like insurgents. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm glad um, they end up cutting her loose that way they can end up doing their whole Kevin McAllister thing out in the jungle. Yeah. I I was going to say I had that kind of a similar note. They could have used Kevin McAllister and Fred Savage from Little Monsters for that matter yeah. for all their and uh Heather Lincoln Camp from Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> My note is really, I just never understood how people could lay traps so well. Because with all the games I've played where you can set up a trap and lure enemies through them, like the precision needed to get the target to land in the trap, they they just always miss it. And I know they laid yeah. out this whole area out with like tripwires, snares, but they're still able to manage to get the predator. Like that's just fucking amazing to me. Yeah, I mean, like it's tough enough in a game where it's an AI that is it's still bound to <laughs> whatever they go into it. Not a living, breathing, thinking creature. I mean, they, and they, they still managed to actually they still managed to catch one of their own. They make the assumption that like he can see their traps. So they're like, we're going to use twine and logs and the, na- the you know nature, I guess, to do their second set up you really think this boy scout bullshit's gonna work it can see our trip wires maybe it can see this instead of complaining maybe you should help <laughs> which like i used to go hiking with my brother and my family as a kid growing up watching like predator and whatnot i figured oh we can do stuff like this in the <laughs> out in the woods in the forest you can't find any vine like that many vines that are that pliable that it's just like, yep, all of this acts as rope. <laughs> it's the first thing they teach you in their commando school. Although the most realistic thing is that these. All these guys are able to just lift full trees up into the sky. Yeah. Yeah, especially later with the accident that Poncho has takes a tree full on. He gets pretty <laughs> hoisted by his own petard. <laughs> Bill, so, Bill will just bring it back. Bill Duke shaving again this time. <laughs> this time he shaves really hard. <laughs> what if we he, find out that Bill Duke, his character Mac, is like a werewolf and he's shaving the entire time because he's slowly transforming he has in that the jungle? Syndrome. It's like, <laughs> I have to stay on top of it. They just cut back to him. He's holding two guns completely done up in. uh, But this time I think he's just kind of like. Out of it and just he's he's mentally go and he just he cuts himself and snaps his razor. Snaps it. Yeah. He's just like kind of not present, not knowing what he's doing and just. You can tell Bill's really affected by. Well, Blaine's death. I'm sorry. Yeah. (laughs) Bill Duke. Max really affected by Blaine's death. The I know when they were talking with Anna, she ends up mentioning something that I never noticed before up until now. She mentions only in the hottest years it happens, which I guess implies that her like group or her people or whoever she's involved with there. Have they encountered the predators before? Yeah. Or is it yeah. a case of. Yeah, she like, tells stories. Yeah. Yeah. That like this has happened. Yeah, because it's like, oh, only in the hottest years it happens. It's like, so have you encountered something out in the jungle or is it just certain hot years people will just go missing or you'll find like skinned bodies but never actually encounter anything? I think it's it's interesting because I never noticed that line before. I yeah. thought this was like the first oh, time that he was coming. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Although I guess that implies is, is it some sort of like hunting raffle on the predator planet of <laughs> everybody's name gets put in and... Only on every so many years, you're allowed to go down like one guy. And is it always Earth? Like, are they, yeah. do, is Earth a very coveted hunting spot or? Is it looked down upon by other predator? <laughs> it's like the shortest straw. Obviously, they probably don't want to go hunt xenomorphs very often. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think those were the highest on the chain of possible. I think hunting man was like one of the worst things that you can get. Hmm. I yeah. mean, because he killed a lot of dude, he killed a lot before he. Before yeah, he and it doesn't got even. Better of him. It didn't even seem difficult. <laughs> so I mean, other than Dutch, 
how do all the rest of their hunts go? They just <laughs> blow through everybody out in the world and it's just, okay, well, we're coming back. We just go back with the pictures of them holding a commando by his leg. For 2,000 like years, uh, we've hunted man. Not a yeah. single predator lost. <laughs> 2,000 zero. <laughs> Um, keep that uh keep the streak alive so they're just hanging out in their booby traps right they're like we've booby trapped the shit out of this entire place except for like the kill zone like the hot gates of sparta what makes you think he's gonna come in through here there are trip wires on every tree for 50 yards this is the only way in <laughs> like he has to come through here <laughs> Which I love how they set all of these traps up. They do all of this stuff. It's we have to stay together. Let's do this. And as soon as like the first trap goes and then it blows itself out of the the first net and then they drop the log on Pancho, yeah. everybody scatters. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we have to stay here. We have to oh, all work shit. together as a team. And all of a sudden it's like run. Everybody just leaves off into different groups. The traps, they do nothing. <laughs> this whole movie is the sound of the predator when he actually is snared. It's completely out of context through the whole rest of the movie. It sounds like a wailing scream. I, I have a note. Predator screams like a bitch. Oh, shit! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a complete bitch. Maybe he copied that from Hawkins. He saved Billy's laugh. Maybe he got that. I say in that moment, you realize Predator is like a trust fund kid. Like, yeah, he's <laughs> he's like he's like the one of the guys that pays to go on the hunting reservation where like <laughs> they come right up to you inside a, a tent. And this should have been he's easy. like, oh, no, they're fighting back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What if the his plasma caster, you always see it like moving automatically. What if that's not him doing it? It's remote controlled from somebody on the ship. dad. Player two. <laughs> yeah, the gun is yeah. awesome, though. So, I mean, as soon as the trap goes off, Poncho gets hit. Everyone scatters. Matt goes running off to the jungle. Dylan follows him and tells them, like, Hold it, Dutch. I'm going after Mac. That's not your style, Dylan. Guess I picked up some bad habits from you. Now get your people the hell out of here. You can't win this, Dylan. Maybe I can get even. Which he finds Max gear and not Mac and assumes he's just been like raptured and goes akimbo out into the jungle. Right, yeah. Which is just so disappointing because it's like, all in all, Dylan's so cool in this movie. Yeah. It's like, I guess he has to be the, he has to die because he double cross, you know, he wasn't truthful, but still seems like a good guy. Yeah. I mean, for the, for the most part, all I mean, of them they, seem okay. They all have to die because that's the story. And Yeah. Well, I mean, up until this point, Mac has been fairly smart. He's the only one who's been saying like, oh, he sees it out in the jungle. He was able to nick it. So it started bleeding. He like got rid of his gear and he's like hiding into the logs and whatnot. So it's super disappointing that after all this, he just gets dropped by a headshot yeah he is the mvp also they didn't have any sniper in their group all heavy weapons hmm. all they really needed was just one guy with like a thermal scope or one guy with anything long range who's so setting up the mission is like dutch is like dylan mac <laughs> i Wayne, need you to respect billy Pancho. <laughs> you're all on demolitions Hawkins, you're on communications. <laughs> I will also be on demolition. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> what are you bringing? A grenade launcher, a mini gun, an assault rifle, and a truck. <laughs> a 1932 Ford pickup. <laughs> what if that's how he took him out at the end of the movie? He just drops a truck into Predator. <laughs> it makes a surprise it's like return. Ends. Hey, it's the truck. <laughs> It was a truck that was planted at the beginning of the movie. Chekhov's truck. <laughs> yeah, Predator so, screams yes. like a bitch. So Predator keeps his kill streak going, gets Mac. That's when we get to see Dylan, unfortunately, go out there. So this is a point I think Dutch realizes that Predator only kills those who are armed or have a weapon. Dylan losing the arm. I like how then he takes the gun and when Predator is coming towards him, you see him wind his shoulder back and move it forward, which, OK, yeah, he dies. But what was his goal there? Yeah. What was the end game? Were you going to stab him? 
I wish he, was had it, fixed- he didn't have the force and he was hoping to like <laughs> move the gun forward to help pull the trigger. With his arm getting shot off, still holding the gun, I was kind of wishing he would pick up the arm, like still firing, and but holding the arm. <laughs> Like this, his fingers stuck firing the gun, but he picks up the arm and he uses it. That would have been that would have been a lot better. Uh, he gets impaled Wolverine style, yeah, or Baraka from Mortal Kombat Two style. Just Predator gets out his bayonets, his arm bayonets. I don't know what the hell you want to call them. Which it's like, granted, all of that stuff now has become so ingrained in Predator lore of like their their weapons, like their the crawl glaive kind of thing the the plasma caster the staff the claws um but i mean the first time seeing this this was cool just seeing all of the stuff that they have yeah Um, yeah the alien weaponry so yeah so unfortunately dylan dies um (laughs) tune in to action jackson for the return of carl (laughs) weathers but this is so they're they're headed to the chopper or rather they're headed to the location of the chopper um, and this is when Billy decides he's going to take a stand when they get out to the the log bridge, which I feel like was a lot of build up, which they do this so often in action movies and all these horror movies and things of somebody is going to stand behind and that way they can go on and they're going to fight the thing. And then immediately you just hear like high pitched screaming. Ah! Well. Through the whole movie, you didn't see him do a goddamn thing. All he did well, was track. He was and their that's tracker. It. But you that's right. He was tracking. I didn't see him shoot. That's true. And then he takes Except out that he... big ass knife and you're expecting this huge showdown, but you really don't know what he's capable of. <laughs> I mean, he makes the slash across his own chest. It was probably to show like, I'm on your side. <laughs> as Arnold, as they're leaving, like he sees Billy take out. Or he doesn't see Billy take out the knife and he's thinking to himself, oh, Billy doesn't try to use the knife. He was never good with that. <laughs> Knives were definitely not Billy's forte. <laughs> what if, I mean, what if Billy was just going to pull the, there's a scorpion on you thing because he saw Mac do it earlier? <laughs> and then he helps the predator track down Arnold. <laughs> With our powers combined, we can kill Poncho. That was a definitely a vivid memory I had of that movie of later on. Uh, we see <laughs> the skull and vertebrae being <laughs> yeah. ripped out of Billy. It was very intense. <laughs> Just drops his body. Yeah, I like I how need. it's not only that Billy makes a stand and he loses, but Billy loses badly. Very and then Billy, <laughs> <laughs> Billy gets his skull ripped out of his body. Just another trophy on the wall. Yep. That was a Pink Floyd song. Um, so oh, the, this is Get to the Chopper. This is, yeah. that's where it comes from. Well, yeah, because it, it's, so they establish that the, the weapons is, tr- are what he determines who he kills or not. So despite saying this, still gives Poncho a gun um, <laughs> <laughs> as he's carrying him through the jungle. But I like how poor Poncho gets a raw deal this entire movie he gets shot in the head and then i like how when anna goes to pick up the gun that movement that arnold does where he like in an action figure stance lifts one side of his body pivots 90 degrees to do a kick of the gun out of her hands and then just starts firing with his mouth open Because I think that's when he gets uh, plasma casted in the the shoulder. Run! And then when right. he's laying there is when he yells. Yep. You know. To her. The pretty the quintessential Arnold line. You, yeah, you know the one. So I'll cut it in. <laughs> get to the chopper. So, I mean, this, this was fun. Dutch taking his, oh shit, fall off a cliff. <laughs> Which it was pretty genuine. Other, it was very yeah, genuine. Like under other circumstances, that looked fun. <laughs> if he wasn't being chased, if his unit wasn't dead, I think being able to swim in a nice secluded area like that probably would have been terrific. Minus, you know, the 
open wounds in jungle water or the fact that he then climbs through mud. I'm more shocked that he took a direct blast by the plasma caster and he survived. His yeah, muscles that... cannot be defeated. <laughs> he has a pace to have them big biceps. That thing must have grazed him like a bite with a millimeter just because that would have taken his arm off. So I like how Dutch immediately learns the mud exploit that hadn't been patched out yet, evidently for Predator. <laughs> right. The nerfed. It's at this point that we get the, the Predator dropping down into the water and it does the cloak short out. Which yeah. I think is, is that the first time we actually see the uncloaked predator? When he's, um, when he's doing first aid, we see, that's when we get the first look at his true alien oh, self. Oh, yep, you're, yeah. When he's doing first aid on himself. Yeah, because this is when we get to see the, um, him landing in the water, it shorts out. Uh, Dutch ends up understanding that, oh, it's the mud that he can't see, it must be thermal vision. Which, kudos to him, great job. Yes, he's very um, smart. And I will say credit to Predator. Usually in that scene in the movie, that's you're, you're safe. You've escaped whatever is behind you uh, taking a yeah. hundred foot fall off of a cliff. But now he yeah. just follows you. <laughs> like, yeah, I can do that, too. Plop right in the water right behind him. <laughs> that was a really Which, good oh shit moment, too, when Arnold realizes, oh, my God, he just jumped down behind me. <laughs> He's like, oh, what if that's what killed him? He follows him off the waterfall. And he he hit a rock. R- turns up on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the movie, Arnold rips out his skull. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He realizes he he's a chameleon. He camouflages with the mud, which is probably does wonders for his skin. Yeah. Um, that's a luxury. That's a that's a spa luxury that he discovered in the jungle. <laughs> Filling his pockets. The... I went back and I got that exact type of clay. A new <laughs> spa that I opened in Venezuela. <laughs> what if as it dries, it hardens and then he can't move? <laughs> He's just like a terracotta warrior. He, that's how he dies. Predator, Predator never... <laughs> Kills him. He just (laughs) dies because he's immobilized. (laughs) He's just encased in clay and then the (laughs) jungle sun bakes him like a tandoori oven. He's found and worshipped by God. (laughs) So I love how as smart as Predator is and as great as he is at his job, he not only can't find him here, that's fine, but he loses interest entirely and just leaves for, what, hours? (laughs) Because Arnold has enough time. Yeah, because Dutch has enough time to just like prep all of his traps again, get all of his stuff ready. It's daytime. Now it's nightfall. And Predator still isn't back yet. That it's just where did he go that he's just hanging out during this time? I mean, this is when we see him pull out Billy's spine and skull. That's where he's taxidermy. Yeah, Does that take him an entire afternoon? He's got a lot of taxidermy to get to. That's yeah. He probably went back to Jim Hopper, hanging Jim Hopper and his three hanging buddies and (laughs) got their skulls and spines and whatever bones. I feel like what if maybe he's making like a big like art piece installation and he's just it's just human bones is the medium. (laughs) I'd assume that's what that's what he's doing. Like back on his planet, somebody is (laughs) buying it for uh... (laughs) Maybe he's a maybe he's like an art dealer, art supplies dealer, and human <laughs> bones very sought after, and he's just doing the dirty work. It's like a know. hobby lobby. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he, yeah, is he, he there? Banksy. T- <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's a, nobody knows who it is though. Maybe he <laughs> is just Banksy, <laughs> <laughs> who, who we know as Banksy. <laughs> Um, yeah, he has a shitload of time, downtime, just to... Uh, I mean, he prepares everything. He builds his own bow. I like how Arnold has time to respec Ranger. And the, I mean, the bow tension on this thing, <laughs> he tests it by firing an arrow clean through a tree. <laughs> <laughs> what tension does this bow have? Have you seen his biceps? Launches, launches a homemade arrow <laughs> three quarters of the way through a solid tree. <laughs> So great. Um, it is, torch it, is it a commentary on technology? It's like you don't need all this fancy stuff. It's, it's what's inside and also what you can MacGyver in the woods that counts. 
So the the setup that he does and then the that torch yell for years, yeah. that was like my favorite thing from this movie. That is, I mean, I, bar none. It's that it was my be, ringtone. I think it's still my favorite thing from this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Just because everything we've seen out of the Predator, Arnold still seems the most metal thing in that jungle when he lights a torch and screams into the night. At a full moon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Max transforming still. <laughs> I like to imagine Predator at that time. He's like taxidermying and looks up. He's like, oh, yeah, shit. I, have, I didn't find that guy yet. <laughs> I would just love if he's like working on it and all of a sudden you hear the yell and from his point of view, he just does the, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he does have eyebrows or like brows as we see later on. I want to see yeah. his expressions, reactions to that. What the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> he just does a double take over each shoulder. <laughs> yeah, so, that's so he beckons him to the ultimate showdown. This fight was cool. Yeah. Um, like, I forget. It's shorter than I always remember. I remember it being like a, a longer part of the last part of the movie, like it being its own like third act. But it's what, maybe like 10 minutes of. Yeah. Yeah. It's not too him long. going through the traps and whatnot, which they probably figured at this point with the cloaking off, it's easier to limit the amount of time that they're having him run around and do all this stuff. Right. Um, which at. Do you, do you, who wants to discuss the predator that might have been now that we're getting yeah. to the point where we have an uncloaked predator? Nick shared us some lovely production photos of, you might know, Brussels, the muscles from Brussels, John claude Van Damme was originally set to play the predator and actually filmed, I think there's actually completed effect shots in the movie that are the original, I think all of the... Some of the cloak shots are yeah. of the original design. I think because you see the eyes, there's a couple times in the movie where you, or once or twice, where you see his, the eyes on the, the face mask light up and glow. And it's actually, when you see those designs of the original monster alien, they're in the same position. So it's pretty evident that they did use that old design, I think, for, and just keep those eyes in a kind of a similar fashion on the new predator design because they're they've already been used and shot which i mean it looks kind of it's not it's intimidating not, yeah i mean it's not terrible but it reminds me of like a guyver villain if you remember a guyver it looked the, even worse when it had the red suit for the stand-in for the special effect for the cloaking because that's really what i remember the most i don't actually remember seeing the behind the scenes of the full creature effect like with all the makeup and stuff done and like it actually looks like the real thing i really just remember just jean-claude van damme running around the jungle in like a bright ass red leotard and i think that probably was one of the big reasons too why he quit aside from hiding that beautiful face of his yeah because this he wasn't uh, he was not an established star at this point i think he was up and coming yeah, and he was like, oh, this is my introduction to America. Was it earlier? Were, was Bloodsport and all that earlier than this? Well, actually, no, it could have been that case. Bloodsport was 88. Yeah, I think he was trying to break. It was like he's breaking into American cinema and it's like, wait, I'm going to be in this costume and moving like shit because it's so heavy. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, at that point, he had done no retreat, no surrender. Which I don't even, I've never even heard of that. And Bloodsport came out in 88, but I don't know when that was filmed. Right. So he was probably, yeah. like I said, he, yeah, I think he's in the middle of like, I'm, I'm getting roles. I'm like, this is, I'm breaking in. Like, he's like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> like, you don't I mean, even he see he was in break in. <laughs> the first one. <laughs> break in two? Yeah, just the first one. Oh. Um, break in, mm. He was a spectator in the first dance sequence, uncredited. I mean, the original Predator uh, look, it looked like, um, if you've ever seen Split Second with Rutger Hauer, it looks kind of like that creature mixed with a Guyver villain. But I would have loved to have seen it do like a split 
in the movie if it was still Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> the end scene, Arnold does his torch thing and then he just Predator drops down into a split. <laughs> the look on Arnold's face. Yeah, so they would they probably would have would have had to have shot him looking imposing too, because he's not a tall guy, right? He's not short, but he's not a No. Which I think I mean, wasn't the I mean, it was probably supposed to be a a more animalistic, faster type thing at that point. I would assume, seeing as Jean-Claude Van Damme is smaller. It I think has it still those, needed like, support. It has those reverse jointed legs, typical of like an... Oh, like so it, the, it kind of would give him that extra boost. So it would have been like stilty. Yeah. Yeah, stilts kind of deal. Because you can see it in the first picture I shared. Right. Yeah, I'm looking at that now. Um, yeah, well, I guess just on his own feet, the actor that plays Predator is what, seven feet or six, something seven, very tall. Yeah. yeah, seven, three. That's just <laughs> very imposing. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently that suit was 200 pounds and and you can tell in the movements where you see him jumping around and such. He had to be supported by a harness, like, you know, overhead suspension system. Like he couldn't just walk around in that suit. It was so unwieldy. I mean, it really works like his movement and just the look of the suit. It was awesome. I think they toned yeah. it down in the second one or at least made it lighter. This really is what made the movie, because if it was that insectoid looking thing that they originally planned, I don't think this movie would have blew up as much as it did. And if even if you kept everything the same, like the come on, do it, come on, I'm right here, like all all of Arnold's lines being exactly the same, just that creature effect just it's one of the most imposing and badass things to see when like predator one is gonna finish off arnold and then they do the whole like hand-to-hand -hand combat so then you see the predator strip down all of his armor he takes off the mask in that final shot and it's just fucking awesome like, yeah, that's Stan my takeaway from this whole movie is like that reveal and finally seeing him like it is one of the shit. coolest, coolest design movie monsters like ever. Mm -hmm. Credit to Stan Winston. They they they'd hired a I don't know how, if it was a quote unquote cheap company to design the first Alien, but uh, Stan Winston from I think from working on Terminator, uh, Arnold was like or some you know sure just Hollywood was not a huge place. <laughs> Everybody probably knew the best creature and, and this practical is one of those designers at the time, but yeah, creature was brought on to do to come up with predator and this was one of those creature effect movies too where it actually looks real like there's not a single point where i'm doubting like oh this is clearly makeup or you know you yeah. can see the the zipper kind of thing in the costume just yeah. staring at it it's like, like it looks a hundred percent real yeah absolutely i mean the the scene when we finally get the mask off and it's the first one where he does the hunch down and both jaws open up and he does yeah. the like the predator that cool shout. low shot. Yeah. Everything about that is perfect. Yeah. That it's instantly it's just like, how are you how do you how is he going to win? Like, yeah, like they had to have known at that point filming that scene that day that, yep, this this is going to not only be a hit. But this specific creature effect makeup is going to be talked about for years. You're one ugly motherfucker. Oh, there was one tidbit about Stan Winston at the time. I guess his studio, they were also simultaneously working on the Monster Squad, which has a plethora of practical monster effects. And apparently they treated the people, the few people working on Predator as like the bastard, <laughs> bastard uh, project at the time. Like nobody wants to do that. We all want to be on Monster Squad. And you only have one monster. We have all of them. Not that Monster Squad is bad, but I mean, Predator is it doesn't it doesn't match the, the, the cult mo uh, monster status, I guess, that Predator has. It's. Oh, yeah. But wait until October when my next vote comes around and we'll be doing Monster Squad. 
<laughs> hey, I'm not I'm not complaining. Wolfman's got nards. It makes sense though, because I mean I'm sure all of those people grew up watching the classic Universal right. monster movies. Yeah, and they're gonna want to pro- work on that instead exactly. of Exactly. Oh great, another action movie with this fucking Schwarzenegger guy. And they did a good job on Monster Squad too, but yeah. the Predator is iconic. Yeah. Which also fun that Shane Black is in this one and wrote Monster Squad. Yes. Very fun. Which I guess makes sense then that like why both of those projects kind of intermingled of certain people that crossed over. Right. Of Oh, like you played in this. We did the creature effects for this. Some people were involved with that. We also did this one. Uh, After you get over the initial awesomeness and shock and awe of the Predator, he's like. Fight me in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> like, he just that, starts. That's what it was missing. The shit out of Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> like, bitch slap back, hands him across the jungle. Well, I like at one point Arnold moves and he like shatters a tree or whatever it was. And it's he hit you with these same fists that just shattered a tree trunk. <laughs> <laughs> what is this doing to his bones? <laughs> Not unlike uh, Poncho being struck with a tree, uh, a tree trap. <laughs> Probably would have felt like. But he's Arnold, and he's got that layer of muscles. That's true. Kind of works shot like with a plasma caster and walked it off. <laughs> works like an adamantium exoskeleton. <laughs> exoskeleton. <laughs> what if Arnold was the predator in this movie? <laughs> they come back years later and do a re like hash of this movie but it's from predator's point of view of he went down for the hunt and he's investigating these guys and then this one guy hunts him through a jungle and kills him <laughs> that's how they market this movie to the predators on yeah. their on their world that's why he blows himself up he has to take this guy out so he doesn't make it back to his planet so i like how all the macho stuff throughout the entire movie we get to the end and dutch doesn't win through a fist fight Clearly gets his ass kicked in a fist fight and he wins by just being smarter yeah. and slightly lucky. Like that kind of stuff is, I guess, what helps make more sense in the beginning of the movie when we were talking about like, oh, like it's so over the top with the raid on the place and all of the dialogue between these guys of this meathead overly macho thing of now coming into the end it makes it more deliberate in the beginning because oh okay it's here to contrast yeah. that right being the strongest isn't what won this for him it's being the smartest yeah. one brains intuition yeah. and his macgyver his it MacGyver just so is. happens he's also the strongest yeah <laughs> otherwise <laughs> in any other situation we would have had hawkins win <laughs> We got to be strong to survive that first part, and then your brains will carry you <laughs> yeah. across the finish line. If your muscles can get you through a plasma caster, falling off a cliff, and uh, getting punched by a tree trunk crusher. So by <laughs> Predator Law, doesn't that mean that Arnie should have gotten a trophy from a Predator? Yeah. Probably wasn't the first thing on his mind, but maybe later on. I mean, on he, he wouldn't have known, <laughs> but at least, you know, Danny Glover got one. That's true. And then the chick in AVP got one. I don't remember. Yeah. This, I don't remember AVP too because I. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Predator 2 happened. They were so insulted that they didn't take a trophy. They were like. Fuck these humans. Well, that's why he showed up in the second movie. There was a Predator that was supposedly just there to drop off the gift. And then he ended up getting embroiled in all of that. <laughs> guys, guys. I just... <laughs> He's ripping a guy's skull out here in an alleyway and then it's a again. record scratch. And you just hear like, you're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> Flashes back. He's on the ship with an Amazon package. Right. <laughs> so Arnold drops the log. Drop. <laughs> Make that sense. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's a different movie. Do it. Come on. Kill me. <laughs> I'm right here. I'm right here. <laughs> Courtesy tells me No. <laughs> That's not what kind of movie this is. So Predator loses, right? And then... (laughs) You say it like a question. Yeah, he does lose at the end. (laughs) He does lose. Predator loses. Like he just copied. Didn't have the last 20 seconds. (laughs) But he doesn't just take the L like an honorable alien. He's like, fuck this whole thing. (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) But, well, I like how, first of all, he tries to lure him into the first trap doesn't work 
So I guess at the end, Dutch doesn't win by outsmarting him. Dutch got lucky with that second trap because he he seems genuinely surprised that, oh, shit, there's other log trap here. And then he hits that thing because he was expecting him to go through the first one under the other branch. Right. I don't know. Rewatching it. I think that he had that intentionally done. Oh, and he was doing it just to fake him out. Well, he literally um, yeah. was shitting his pants. Though. Here's the obvious trap. Because like oh, he, the predator starts playing with one of the, the spikes. Yeah. And at that whole point, too, when Arnie's setting it up, he it's really drawing to that point of like he him setting it all up. And I'm thinking that it's more so he's planning the trap instead of thinking the obvious, the predator's going to go under it. He's thinking he wants him to actually go over it with how mm. well he hid everything else. It seems kind of weird that this one was the most exposed. Actually, yeah, that makes more sense right. that way. Which I like how after Predator gets hit with the log and he notices he's still alive and he picks up the rock, he looks at him, realizes he's dying, and then decides not to crush his head with the rock, which after all of this stuff, Dutch still decides, I'll show him mercy. <laughs> and he's rewarded with a nuke. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I don't think he got to that point. He's just like, wait, what's this motherfucker doing? <laughs> I think it was more just utter shock. That's true. I mean, he's like, it's not mercy. It's just like, what the fuck are wait, you? I just killed an alien. <laughs> you one ugly motherfucker. I mean, it would have been great if he sees it dying. It goes to reach for its hand and he just smashes it with a rock. That's how it ends. Credits start going as Arnold's just smashing it repeatedly. Long talk, Sally pulls up, starts playing over the top Predator's of it. Predator's like, wait, I can make you a rich man. <laughs> <laughs> Just crushes him. You don't know who my father is. <laughs> Predator with subtitles would have been great. It seems dishonorable to be like, he's not assuming Arnold's going to survive his mini nuclear blast like in the jungle, right? I mean, he's going to like, well, you won, but fuck you. Like, I'm going to kill I, you. Now, with the question is, seen as they are a... <laughs> planet of hunters and whatnot with their technology i don't know if it's a case of sore loser or it's a case of i need to completely eliminate myself so any of my technology doesn't get found and used the sequels kind of make it seem like it's the latter okay i mean well, that makes sense oh, that's true yeah because all the other ones there end up like giving danny glover a gift at the end of the other one so it's like you bested us here you go yeah, like in the <laughs> second Unless all AVP, of them show up and they set off their own nukes. Second AVP, the whole thing is just following like the cleanup squad. And yeah. he's just following and making sure that it's all done. But at this point, it's the first movie. God knows if that's the case. It probably yeah. was. He was just a sore loser. And I don't think he was trying to cover his tracks. Because he was laughing more, about it. I think it would make more sense if it wasn't manual i mean he has to open his thing and like all right time to set off my bomb like i i feel like if i had a nuke on my wrist i wouldn't want that being set to automatic well maybe like heart triggered you know like what if he was what if he got shot in the head like he doesn't have, he's dead he can't or he sees another attractive predator that stops his makes his heart skip a beat you're such a romantic <laughs> <laughs> Just play uh, Top Gun, take my breath away. He sees another predator. They do the slow-mo as it walks by. All of a sudden you hear, beep, That's the beep, rom -com. beep, 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 Oh, that's no. the 80s rom-com that's missing. I want to see. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, I think, I, I would say it's, I, and that makes sense what you're trying to say about his tech being stolen. But if he got, if he got shot with no chance of setting that off, then that plane yeah. was out the window. Although... At the same time, I guess in the later movies, it makes more sense that they're getting rid of their tech. In the first movie, they probably didn't have that thought in mind because as he's running away, you hear him repeat the laugh from Billy. So mm -hmm. it's like, why would he? Well, also him doing the laugh from Billy implies that he what understands amusement. <laughs> <laughs> right because yeah, why would he know it. to play that noise while the dutch is running away from right. him that's another good point that's like mocking you like ha ah, fuck you yeah you killed me but you're not getting out of here alive you son of a bitch. <laughs> little does he know dutch outruns a nuclear blast <laughs> and then finds the helicopter the helicopter waited yeah helicopter pilot kevin uh peter hall yes the predator in the human flesh yeah 
<laughs> what if it was like still him, but as the helicopter pilot, he gets to the helicopter and it's him flying it. It's like a like the thriller video. He turns back and his <laughs> eyes turn. <laughs> his mandibles come out and it's like Vincent Price starts. Or you, we get the Billy laugh again. <laughs> and it freeze frames on him. So. I know there was a lot of talk. I don't know if it's true or not. The second Predator movie originally was supposed to be. Um, they come back and Arnold was supposed to return. He didn't. Um, so when they did Predator 2, the Gary Busey character was supposed to be the Dutch character from the first movie. I don't know if that was ever confirmed, mm -hmm. but if that's the case, that would have been such a slap in the face to be like, you remember Dutch from the first one? Now he's a crazy government agent and he gets murdered. Spoilers for Predator 2. Very much spoilers. I think there's there's a lot of things floating around about this movie and Predator 2. Like how this was originally supposed to start as a Rocky sequel. Because the idea started of, well, he's beaten everybody else at this point. What next? We have him fight an alien. And then they said, yeah. And then slowly it turned into Predator. So Dutch is on the helicopter. And then the credits roll. That's he looks ends. like shit. Yes. The weight of everything that just happened, you could see is all over his face. Also, most of the jungle seen as it's all ash and the fact that he was in the blast radius of a nuclear bomb. Although then again, we don't know if it's a nuke. We just know it's some sort of bomb. So it's not like he's going to end up uh, growing a third arm. On a pretty intense mushroom cloud. <laughs> Is, so is the mushroom cloud itself caused because of the radiation or is it just because of the blast? <laughs> I think it, you can have it doesn't have to be nuclear to be a, a devastating it's just the size cloud. of the explosion. Just the size of the explosion. Oh, OK. Yeah. 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 Just nukes are inherently that gigantic. Yeah. Um, and so then that's the 90s, 90s TV show intro and credits. <laughs> I love the I forget which of you two. I think it was Nick sent the the video of the yeah. um, somebody search online, go on like YouTube or something and search Predator sitcom outro because um, <laughs> it's it's terrific. It works perfectly. And the funnier thing is that after I sent it to you guys and then, you know, I watched that and then watching the actual end credits, they didn't edit anything. All they did was just throw the full house like intro or whatever into <laughs> the scene. They yeah. did no doctoring of the video itself. So as you're that's watching it, good. like that's that's exactly he's there's the wink. There's the smile. I'm going to throw the gun to you from off camera and you're going to grab it and you're going to smile at the camera. <laughs> Which I kind of I know some people hate it, but I kind of like how their outro is something like that or how the outro to um, I don't know, other movies that have like the. It'll be a serious movie or like a the horror movie like uh, The Mutilator, where they'll have an outro that's kind of fun because people feel it kind of ruins the last emotion you have leaving the movie. But also, it's like it's kind of nice because you have a movie of. These are characters you like. You don't want to end it on a note of they're all dead. Things are terrible. It's, oh, I left the theater thinking this was fun. Right. So I guess for just the just because it's a I mean, it's like loud. It is a, it's a good sci fi movie, but it's also just kind of a spectacle. Yeah. With action spectacle, too. So, you know, the one liners and everything. So I think it's like the fun ending kind of makes sense fun quote unquote they didn't add quirky music to it but they're, oh, just, no. they're yeah. just out of character for a bit yeah but it's so, good it's definitely a good good button to the movie so overall movie recommend predator did it hold up 10 times over it is one of the movies i can continue watching and it still holds up yeah good shit if it airs, we will watch it. The like I know over like between this Surf Ninjas or past episodes and whatnot, we poke fun at these. And I know we point out glaring things in the movie. 
but I think overall it's because we like them. Um, like, I don't want people to think we just like making fun of some of these movies. I it's, don't think we've ever. Um... I mean, not so much Predator. I think I we hit Surf Ninjas and Little Monsters a little hard, but I think it's because you can appreciate something and also see its faults. <laughs> of it course. doesn't make it it doesn't make it any less watchable. It's growing up on these things is it makes it fun. You make fun of a friend. You still like them, but you'll point out some fun stuff. I don't know a single other person that has seen Surf Ninjas. <laughs> You've <laughs> I mean, us, yeah, friends before, that I've told <laughs> forcing you guys to watch these. Oh, 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 oh. Like in yeah, their childhood to watch it. Like I think Surf Ninjas is safe, and it, um, Little Monsters really just was surprising on watching it as an adult versus a child. Yeah, it's that's the whole thing. It's we're putting these retroactive lenses on and why did we like this as a kid and i think we're we're touching on those points of what attracted <laughs> so, us to these movies and why we remember them even though some, they're objectively maybe not great movies except for the trailer uh i guess ignorance is bliss <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but it's it's fun in any case to uh to revisit these and predator is just one that uh we've probably already revisited many many times before this podcast oh yeah i love how the at some point i originally had this on the vhs i bought it on dvd moved to massachusetts and didn't have my copy so i bought it again on dvd then it was released on blu-ray so i bought it there then it was like released on 4k so i bought it there and then when we decided to sit down and watch this, I checked my bookshelf. And at some point, I must have taken all three of my copies down back home when I visited my parents and forgot them there. So I ended up having to buy it digitally just so I can watch it again. So Predator is the only movie at this point that I think I own five times over. <laughs> that is saying a lot. Spent like over $100 just to watch Predator. You and Carl Weathers. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's a baseless joke. I, I, uh... I don't know. I just wanted to give you the laugh. <laughs> Thank you. It's, 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 fun, it's fun to be part of things. So join us next week for Predator 2. Yay. <laughs> I'm getting too old to watch Predator 2. So I don't, I don't know if we have... Who's next on the docket? Nick? I think Nick. so. I'm going to stop do recording. You, do you have anything in... You know, no, not yet. Wait, why? You have the, the preview of the coming attractions. Do you have anything in mind yet, Nick? No, no, not at all. Okay. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Episode four of Screen Refresh. Uh, we're out. <laughs>